Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look at an unofficial build of Resurrection Remix OS for the Pixel 2. Now I have an installation video that you can take a look at here if you're interested in the process of doing something like this, and timestamps for this video will be in the more info down below. Now when you think of customization, you think, ah, Resurrection Remix. You get pages on pages of options and tweaks built right into the settings menu, ranging from the lock screen to the status bar, and even the animations for lists and toasts. The list goes on and on, but I'll show you some of the tweaks that I currently use right now after we talk about the stability of the ROM. Well, a great ROM like this would be awful to use if it wasn't stable at all, right? The good news is, so far this ROM has been quite stable within my use over a couple weeks. There have been a few missing features, but essentially all the mods and tweaks that are available in the Resurrection Remix configurations menu work just fine. In the June 13th build, the live display options have been fixed now, allowing you to automatically change the display color temperature, similar to that of the night light in stock Android, and for setting the display to grayscale. Color calibration is also there for you if you need it. And one option that has persistently been broken so far between releases is just the accent color in styles. Everything else, such as the style, overall style, and also the black theme, work just fine. Although changing the accent color or using the auto magic function doesn't work as intended, it just crashes the Lineage OS settings. And on the other hand, Substratum also works, even without root, as Resurrection Remix has the specific commits implemented from the project development team, so theming apps will be business as usual providing you take into consideration about theming system components, as mentioned before. On previous builds, I did experience some system-related crashes, but thankfully, those have all but disappeared. However, I do have a bug where tapping and holding on the quick settings in the notification view doesn't expand the setting correctly. It just fills up the top segment of the notification shade for some reason. And also, squeezing for the assistant is also currently missing. But if I can recall correctly, it may not be possible to implement in custom ROMs, but uh, hopefully I'm wrong. I did have some issues with Magisk a few days later, thinking it had been uninstalled, but it looks like it's just been fixed with Magisk Beta version 16.6. I'd flashed the latest beta of Magisk, reinstalled Magisk Manager, and it looked like smooth sailing from there. As usual, Magisk behaving like that has been reported as a general issue to Magisk itself for a while now. Now on to the juicy part, features. I would say this ROM is best known for the level and just the sheer amount of customization that it offers right out of the box. I'll just show a few of the tweaks that I absolutely love, and I know you can probably do the same things with some apps nowadays, but here, you don't need to flash anything. Uh, but here we go. So first up is the notification ticker. Now I guess it's not really obvious in recent versions of Android, but this is for that pre-lollipop experience with notifications that we've all been missing out on pretty much. It shows the music that's playing as well as an option, and it looks like uh, you may face some slight graphical bugs when using the notification ticker, where some apps icons don't appear properly, properly scaled. You may also need to disable heads up notifications to make this a more seamless experience. Next up is Smart Pixels. Now I've seen this on the Play Store before where it disables a percentage or a pattern of pixels when the battery is low or just because you feel like it but this one is built right into Android essentially. So when the battery is low, it can turn off a percentage of pixels on the screen to reduce, I guess, it could be for brightness or even for, of course, screen energy consumption. It also has built-in burn-in protection, so you don't have to worry too much about it having a negative impact on your screen. You can select the intervals that it changes its pixels around in the settings here. Next up is the fling navigation bar. Maybe the OG gesture navigation for Android, which gives you a bit of freedom to assign both tap and swipe gestures to the navigation bar. You can choose a custom icon from an icon pack, or even a custom image that is 512 by 512 in resolution. Now this allows you to have the usual gestures that you can do from the beginning or the center of the navigation bar, kind of similar to how some recent Motorola devices have it uh, when you swipe on the home button. It's sort of like that, but of course, with a lot more customization. And then we have some minor customizations such as controlling the media with the volume keys, changing the fonts for the clock, applying icon packs to the recents menu, or even changing the recents menu to slim recents if that's something that you like doing. It's very interesting actually. And even changing things like the toast and list and screen off animations. As I said before, the list just goes on and on and on. Now on to battery. Now, a lot of people would consider this quite important, 
uh, pretty much next to stability and I would say it's just exactly the same as stock Oreo. I haven't noticed you know, severe battery drops or a massive battery gain from flashing Resurrection Remix, although not as good as Android P, but yeah, there hasn't been any notable battery changes when using this ROM. So in conclusion, and I'll make this very, very brief, if you like options, and a whole heap of them, Resurrection Remix is your friend. There is so much more you can change, so you'll want to try it out for yourself before you come to a verdict, you don't just have to listen to me of course, and a link to the ROM will be in the more info down below, so you can get cracking on that, and as always, you can join me on Discord, and we can chat there, you can ask for help, or just anything really, just a general communications platform, and like I usually say, happy flashing.